Hello, my name is Magnus Renbergit and today I'm going to show you how to create and use snippets using the LT Snippets plugin for Lighttable. The plugin loads snippets defined in a snippets folder located in your Lighttable settings directory. Now I'll just create a simple snippets collection which I've called JS2. And the first thing you need for a snippet collection is a snippet definition file. A snippet definition file is just an Eden file with a certain format. And the first thing you need to define is the modes, or rather the edited tags, uh, that you want your snippets to match. So that you can actually limit your snippets for certain kind of editors. So today, we're going to write some JavaScript snippets. And we're going to start fairly simple with a console log. We'll give it a key and we'll write a short little snippet. We need to be able to give it a message. statements. Okay, so let's try it out. The first thing I need to do to make sure that it actually works is to ensure that our editor is actually a JavaScript editor. So to test our snippet we can expand by token. So there is a command for that. Expand by editor token. And it's obviously quite useful to assign a shortcut for that. So it stops here, I can give it hello, and voila, that works. Okay, let's uh, do something a little bit more advanced. Sorry. Uh, let's create a demo function. And rather than using the snippet property, we're now going to put our snippet in an external file. And we'll call it snip. Something like that. So we're going to do something a little bit more elaborate, but not too advanced. So here I'm going to create a Mirrored field. Um, like so. And we probably want a name for our function, so. And we want some parameters. Like so. Make sure that the editor, or rather that the cursor, ends up where I've specified these dollar zero. Okay, so that should now work with some luck. Let's see if it's fun. Yeah. Okay, so it's my function, my params, and you can see that the mirrored tab stop changes as I type. And when I complete the snippet, the cursor ends up where I wanted it to end up. Okay, let's say that I often want to wrap some statements, or rather I want my snippets to wrap around uh, a statement that I've already entered. Uh, the plugin ships with some inbuilt functions, which is kind of useful. So you can run a piece of arbitrary JavaScript code, uh, but to make any sort of sense, it should probably return some sort of value. So in our case, the plugin exposes some functions 
through the snip dollar um, variable. And that's a global variable. And one of them is wrap selection eager. There's a less eager one as well, which forces you to actually make a selection, but the eager one uh, basically selects the current line if you haven't actually made a selection. Okay. So now, if we do our console log thingy, and then our function thingy, you can see that it wraps around the console log statement. Okay. And one thing I didn't show you is that you, if you can't really remember all your uh, keyboard shortcuts, there's also a menu function, which I've mapped to a shortcut, and where you can list all your shortcuts, and you can filter by name, etc, etc, and then you can invoke it from that menu as well. Right? Okay, let's uh, do one final snippet to show you some even more advanced functionality. Sorry. So, let's call that the get set. Give it a key, get set. And again, we're going to use an external file for this. Mm, let's call it get set snip. Okay, let's say you want to create some sort of property and you want a getter to be uh, generated automatically for you as well. So, this get, but you want to uppercase the first letter of the property name. Can you do that? Yes, of course you can. So, sorry, I need to remove this one. So, I can write a function that takes a value, which is basically the value of the tab stop. Uh, above, and we wish to return to uppercase plus v slice one, or something like that. And we want to make sure that we terminate it. Terminate the statement there, and that's the function that. returns the property, like so. Okay, let's test that one then. I can now specify a property, my property. You can see that it does a transformation of the property name for the getter and returns the property name. Hello. Voila. Okay, that's all fairly cool, but we can do a little bit better, or rather, to keep our sanity, we probably don't want these, uh, this inline snippet code to become too unmanageable. So we can extract uh, snippet functions in to our own little helper. So let's do that. And like so. so let's create a short little function which we call cap first. It doesn't have to be that anonymous anymore. 
and we wish to expose that function so we can use the variable snip dollar and create a sub namespace or rather an object which exposes the function cap first yeah like so uh, that's cool but there's one more thing we need to do and that's oops to tell the plugin where to load the functions from. So, again, it's just a file reference to .js, like so. And the final piece of the puzzle is to actually remove all this craft and First, so a little bit more readable now. Let's just check that it still works. It didn't, so what did I forget? Uh, JS Yeah, looks like it should work. Yeah, so I just probably forgot to save it. So now it still works, which is cool. Okay, um, that pretty much concludes what I was planning to walk through this time. And um, I do recommend you have a look at the README. Uh, hope you'll give it a go and uh, do let me know what you think. Alright, thank you.